It's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of your questions answered. And in last week's episode, I answered another question from one of my clients. And the question in last week's episode was, should neurological observations be done every hour after seizures and stroke? You can check out last week's question by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I wanna answer the next questions from one of my clients, Andrea who has her 34-year-old sister in intensive care with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and is currently experiencing a decrease in blood count as well as having second thoughts about the treatment her sister is getting. So today's episode is, is withdrawing treatment and quote unquote pulling the plug on my 34-year-old sister in ICU illegal? You can check out previous one-on-one -on -one consulting and advocacy sessions with me and Andrea if you are clicking on the relevant links below this video. And if you are watching this on YouTube, you can click on the link below this video. That'll get you to our website where you can access the written version of this blog as well as other free resources on our website that helps you who has a family member critically ill in intensive care. So here is what here is the email exchange between Andrea and myself. So I write, hi Andrea, I have read through the policy that you have emailed to me. It's pretty much a standard policy that you find across all major public hospitals in Australia. There is enough information in the policy to build an argument in favor of your sister to giving her full and standard treatment rather than withdrawing treatment. We have successfully used a similar policy in Queensland just a few months ago to build a case for a client in ICU where ICU wanted to limit and withdraw treatment. So that was a very similar situation. Very happy to discuss on our next phone call and then we can take it from there. So Andrea writes, Hi Patrick, I hope you are having a good day. My sister's blood counts for today are white cell count 1.65, hemoglobin 67, platelets 16.1, INR 1.3. I have noticed that the counts are dropping on a daily basis. The nurse said the counts don't mean much without taking the entire condition into account. I have sent an email with a formal complaint and visited their office too. The family meeting is supposed to be tomorrow. I'm not sure on the time, but I would love for you to attend. Kind regards from Andrea. Here is my response. Hi Andrea, please see my comments below in relation to the blood products and I'll come to that in a moment. I'm very glad you have made a complaint and spoke to the hospital. It'll probably get more difficult before it'll get easier, but at this point in time, you've got to do what's necessary and it will get easier. I don't agree that the blood counts don't mean much without taking the entire condition, condition into consideration because the entire condition is so critical by not giving blood products, your sister's general condition can't be optimized and hence waking up might get delayed. I also have been in contact with another lawyer if you want to, and I'm probably getting another name later this afternoon. A lawyer may not be necessary if we think they will be responsive to your requests, but we have to be prepared in case things get more difficult. I would really urge you to keep an eye if your sister's blood pressure drops and if she needs inotropes or vasopressors, as it could change many things. Also. Do you know what her neutrophils are? Any questions, please let me know. I'm very happy to talk anytime from now on and also I will be in the meeting tomorrow. 
So here are my answers to your questions regarding the blood count. So you said white cell count is 1.65. That is really low, concerningly low. In fact, the normal rate is 4 to 11. Hemoglobin 67. Likewise, like the white cell count, it's concerningly low. Again, some ICUs give red blood cells if hemoglobin is less than 70 and others if hemoglobin is less than 60, but it also comes down to if your sister needs inotropes or not. As long as she can stay off the inotropes and vasopressors for a low blood pressure, a low hemoglobin can be tolerated for a period of time. However, in your sister's case, with low white cell count and low neutrophils, she would greatly benefit from blood products. Platelets is 16.1, you said, and again, that's very low with high risk of bleeding. And you mentioned INR 1.3. It's almost normal and not too bad. Your sister is most likely still at risk of bleeding with low platelets. Another parameter to look for coagulation in the blood is APTT. So as I said to you, Andrea, I'm very happy to attend the family meeting tomorrow over the phone. Let me know what time it would be advantageous, advantageous if we can talk before the meeting to map out our strategy. Most families go into these meetings without a strategy, and that's a big mistake. Also, I will be in Sydney next week, potentially Wednesday and Thursday. I will be spending most of the time in the Blue Mountains with a potential client for my in-home care nursing service, intensive care at home. But I will be, of course, available over the phone and via email. I will also be available for a meeting if you think that helps most likely on the Thursday. I also put a link to the side effects of the drug Kepra because you wanted that. One side effect that's mentioned and that I was unaware of is decreased neutrophils, which in your sister situation in particular is a big concern. Here is what you may want to consider and put in perspective. I have never seen such high doses of Kepra. I believe you mentioned your sister is about 90 kilograms and I still haven't seen such high doses of Kepra with patients greater than 100 kilogram with chromal seizures which is a type of seizure that involves a loss of consciousness and violent muscle contractions. Not sure if your sister had gromal or minor seizures. In any case, what I can see by them giving such high doses of Kepra is the following. They want to rule out any seizures to further cause damage to the brain. I still think the goal would be to wake up your sister, which will be difficult but not impossible with such high doses of Kepra. But as I said, I haven't seen such a high dose of Kepra ever. We will need to ask the ICU doctors tomorrow why they are giving such high doses. I'm way more worried. I'm way more worried about them not giving blood products, just like you've mentioned. At least by having such high doses of Kepra, your sister hopefully won't have any more seizures for now, which is important as well. Also, you may want to check out the attachment that I sent in the email in relation to Glasgow Coma Scale. And I put a picture of the Glasgow Coma Scale below this video. Or if you are, again, watching this on YouTube, click on the link. It'll get you to our website where you can access the picture and the explanation for GCS or Glasgow Coma Scale. Glasgow Coma Scale is most likely something they will bring up in the meeting tomorrow. And I would also want to know what her GCS is like currently. GCS is basically an assessment score for patients in a coma. ICU teams often use this score to determine future treatment or the lack of such. We should discuss this tomorrow before the meeting so you have a basic understanding about this functional score. I will be busy for the next hour or so but can be available after 9 p.m. if you want to talk. Now, if you want to book a free consultation call with me, just click on the link on the top of the website where it says schedule your free appointment and we can get on the phone very quickly. So Andrea writes, hi Patrick, thank you so much for your support, guidance and advice over the past 
week. I am very grateful that I found you. My other sister and I are staying with Susan overnight. Her temperature is dropping and so is her low blood pressure. My assumption is that her body is slowly going. I still will continue fighting the system once my sister passes away. What they have done is unethical and it should be exposed before more families are shattered. I would be more than happy to write a recommendation about you and your services. Thank you so much for everything from Andrea. Hi Andrea, you're most welcome for my help. I hope you get a rest after you've spent the night with your sister. The system is shocking and yesterday's family meeting was a prime example in how the system is treating people. I was shocked too, but not too surprised because I have unfortunately seen similar situations before. I would also like to support you in fighting the system and have some ideas around that, but let's not put the cart before the horse. Another thing you may want to keep in mind is if you and your family may want to consider an autopsy when your sister passes to find the exact cause of death. Not a pleasant, to talk, not a pleasant topic to talk about, but you don't want to find out about those options when it's too late. In any case, please let me know how I can help today or over the next few days. My phone is always on. So Andrea writes, Hi Patrick, I thought you should know that my sister passed away yesterday, just after midnight. I'm hoping you took notes from the family meeting we attended on Wednesday. If you could please send me your recollection of the meeting, that would be greatly appreciated. After we finalize everything for my sister next week, I'm seeking further action against some of the doctors. This shouldn't have happened the way it did. One of the doctors in particular should be held accountable. If you are able to help, that would be greatly appreciated. Kind regards from Andrea. Andrea also writes, I want to thank you again for all your support and help with my sister. I'm very grateful that I found you. We discussed the option of an autopsy and my mother wanted to pursue this and I did too as we wanted to know exactly what caused her death. But after thinking about it on a deeper level, I explained to my mum that she came into this world whole and she should go out of this world whole. I didn't think it was humane nor fair her to cut her up to bits and, anal and ana analyze her body parts under the microscope. I just wanted her to go to heaven with dignity. Something I feel the hospital and doctors, if you can call them that, didn't provide to her. I look forward to the notes and speaking to you soon. Kind regards from Andrea. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one, how can you make informed decision, decisions get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You will get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you will learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control, and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you will learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover 
how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You will get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation how to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's your questions answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also have a look at our membership site intensivecaresupport.org for families of critically ill patients in intensive care. You can also call me, find international phone numbers on the top of the website. Also, have a look at our ebooks, and you can also get one on one consulting and advocacy with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the relevant tabs on the top of the website. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, and I'll see you again next week in another update.